Welcome everybody to the Short Sports Show. I'm your host Daniel Short. Today is Saturday, February 7th. A little bit differently and a little different intro, different day. Uh, again, now the show is on is every Saturday morning here on Spreaker.com, iHeartRadio, iTunes, YouTube, wherever you're listening. That is where it's, it's every Saturday. It, it's what it is. Um, but now, you know, it is no more football. It, it, it's, it's, it's tough to say. It's tough to swallow to say that. Seven more months until we have actual NFL action, about, what, six and a half for college football, somewhere around there, maybe still seven. I don't really know. I mean, thankfully, we have, you know, the NFL draft, the combine, or the combine and, you know, the NFL pro days, and then the NFL draft to talk about. Coming up pretty soon. I mean, you you know, think about it. February is gonna go by pretty fast. Then we got March. That's when all the hype leads up. And then the end of March and part of April is the NFL draft. So we have the combine, you know, coming up pretty soon and pro days. So gives us something a, a little bit to talk about, you know, between then and then after that, it's like a huge drop off because training camp doesn't start until about August. So uh, you know, it's gonna be tough. We've done it before. You know, we've we've gone through our NFL off seasons before. We will do it again. Um, and then, you know, college football stuff. So that that's going to be a little bit harder because we know that, you know, college football, it, you know, there's really nothing for college football. I mean, it ties in with the NFL draft and whatnot. So I don't know. But enough rambling. Let's go ahead and get started on this. You know, we got a lot to talk about. Thankfully, we do have some college football news. And we also do have some uh, NFL news. And my whole point about all of that was trying to get said was now we're going to get ready for MLB. We still talk about baseball on this show. This is a short sports show. We do talk about a lot of different things. We wait to talk about the NBA until the playoffs happen. You know, we want the, you know, get a little bit better. How about the playoff change that might happen in the NBA? We could talk about that as soon as the playoffs do start. And, uh, MLB, we're getting ready for that because that's just around, right around the corner. I mean, softball started this week. College baseball starts uh, next week. Baseball, April. It, you know, it's getting closer. It's getting closer. But first, let's go ahead and talk about some college football news. And uh, I guess some bad news for Illinois. Uh, their assistant wide receiver coach, Mike Bellamy, will sit out at least one game next season. After the NCAA ruled that he improperly helped a recruit get an associate's degree, which it's kind of weird. It's like you're getting, uh, you know, having bad things happen for doing a good thing. Unless he helped him cheat, which I'm assuming that's what happened. Because, I mean, if you're helping someone get a degree, you would think, hey, that's, you know, it's pretty nice. But maybe gave him some fake classes. I don't really know. Uh, the sports information director, Kent Brown, confirmed Thursday that Bellamy will miss the 2015 season opener against Kent State under an NCAA imposed uh, suspension. Also, Illinois starting court, uh, or actually backup quarterback Aaron Bailey is transfer transferring. Kent Brown again <laughs> uh, said Bailey made the decision after meeting Thursday with coach Tim Beckman. Brown uh, said he does not know where Bailey's destination or where he plans to transfer to, but Beckman was the primary starter until Wes Lunt came in and just did work, uh, the transfer from Oklahoma State. Brown said Beckman agreed to the transfer, uh, provided Bailey does not move to another pick, Big Ten school or play uh, goes to a school that Illinois plays, check this out, for the next three seasons. Three seasons. So he can go to any school except for the Big Ten. And Illinois can't have them on the schedule for the next three years, which um, I'm guessing Illinois already has their non-conference teams ready for the next three years. I mean, because that would kind of suck. You get transferred. You transfer to one place. Illinois kind of forgets about you and says, hey, let's schedule that team. And then you're thinking about three years later, like, now I can't play here because of this stupid little rule. I don't know. Anyways, in 14 games over two seasons, Bailey completed 13 of 27 passes for 122 yards, two touchdowns, and an interception. So, apparently he was a dual-threat quarterback. He mainly just ran. He wasn't a much of a passer, which by that, eh, you can kind of see why. Freshman running back Joe Mixon, who was suspended from the Oklahoma football program for the 2014 season after he was charged with a misdemeanor for punching a female student, has now rejoined the team. The Sooners running backs coach, uh, Cal Gundy, told reporters Wednesday, saying, quote, he made a split second and wrong decision, and he knows that. 
He's a super, super kid. Uh, and I use that term kid because he's still a kid. He's still very young. Apparently, they are really excited to have him back uh, because of his playing ability. He was rated, I believe, the 53rd overall player. Or over, yeah, I believe overall player back in the 2014 class. He was high, He was rated higher than Samaje P. Ryan, who we all know was a Big 12 uh, a freshman player of the year. So that's huge to have them. They, they believe they're going to split time, and Joe Mixon is, um, you know, could be the next, you know, one of the big running backs for them, and they're very excited to have him back. And it's just, I mean, I guess that's a good suspension. Uh, hopefully he didn't redshirt, though. I mean, because if he redshirted that year, then it's like nothing really happened because then he'd just be a redshirt freshman this year. And it wouldn't really count as a suspension because, you know, some freshmen do just redshirt their first year. And I don't know. I wouldn't see that being right. But uh, they never announced whether he redshirted last season um, or not because he still made he still was in class he still did everything you know normal student would um, just didn't participate in any athletics for uh, the Sooners some sad news over the week that was announced that college game day ESPN's college game day which I don't know if you watch and if you don't and you're a college football fan you really shouldn't call yourself a college football fan because this is the best pregame show i think out of even the nfl i think it's just amazing what they do with the stories um the interviews everything combined the the people they have is amazing and they kind of just took a huge chunk of it out reese davis is now taking over as the host of espn's college game day with chris fowler now going to be focusing on the saturday night primetime games excuse me the network said thursday that davis had signed a contract extension through 20 21 uh fowler had hosted game day since 1990 i didn't even know it was that long but i mean just i i like chris fowler i like him more than reese davis i truly do um I mean, reese davis is not bad he was uh, he had he was doing the uh early in the morning for the national signing day he was part of it he did a good job i, I have nothing against reese davis it's just chris fowler was i don't know he just he was part of the crew. He was part of that team with Desmond Howard, Kerb Herbstreit, Lee Corso. It was just everything. That was just the perfect crew you can have. And now they just took out Fowler and put Reese Davis in, which to me they kind of look the same in a way. I think maybe if you put the picture side by side, they wouldn't. But every time I think of Chris Fowler, sometimes I'll think of uh, Reese Davis and then vice versa. Either way, though, Chris Fowler was a whole lot better. And uh, now he won't be on there because last season – Chris Fowler became ESPN's lead uh, play-by-play announcer for college football, replacing Brent Musburger, who went to the SEC Network. Um, And so that meant sometimes that when game day was hosting in one location in the morning, Chris Fowler would then have to do the Saturday night football game, um, which took place obviously that night, in another place. So he could be at Oregon and then that, you know, for college game day. And then let's say Florida State and blah, 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 who were playing each other, he would have to go and fly right to Florida, uh, Tallahassee. So, I mean, Curb Herb Street does that all the time. I don't see why Chris Fowler couldn't do it as well. I mean, Herb Street can do it. I'm sure Chris Fowler could do it as well. But whether that was up to Fowler or that was up to ESPN, uh, or actually right here it says Fowler initially wanted said he wanted to continue doing both roles. So... Obviously, he wanted to, but ESPN decided not to. Reese Davis, I guess, wanted a bigger role. And so um, he's now the host of College Game Day now. And Reese Davis will no longer call Thursday night college football games for the network. They'll have someone else do it. But just I feel like it's a tragedy. I do. I I, I did like Chris Fowler doing that. And um, not anymore. So we'll just have to see Chris Fowler every Saturday night for college football, which still wasn't bad. Still wasn't bad. Uh, University of Tennessee has hired former Michigan offensive coordinator and Central Michigan head coach Mike DeBoard as the offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach. Tennessee also announced that wide receivers coach Zach Azini has been promoted to the passing game coordinator and that running backs coach Mike Galepsi uh, would add to the, at the title of recruiting coordinator. So some news for Tennessee. Colorado has hired former USF uh, coach Jim Livett as defensive coordinator and Central Michigan defensive coordinator Joe uh, Tumpkin as safeties coach. Uh, 
I, I feel like I'm saying this wrong name wrong, but live it, leave it. I'm trying to get a little little pronunciation right there. Has been a linebackers coach with the San Francisco 49ers uh, for the last four seasons, uh, but head coach Mike McIntyre, 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 Colorado head coach. Yeah. Anyways, he's six and eighteen in the last two seasons, which is worried some Buffalo fans, but. Don't worry. The, the, I mean, the Buffaloes have been making some strides. They've been more competitive in games, but the only part that's holding them down is a defense, as they ranked 120th in the nation last season in yards per play allowed at 6.5, which was obviously worst among teams in Big Five conferences. But there's only, what, 122, 124, eight schools in the country, and they were 120th. That's terrible. Colorado's defense ranked 101 in yards per play uh, back in 2013. So they really took a huge drop. I mean, I guess it's not too much of a drop as being from 101 to 120, but it's still really bad. You you, you suck at defense, basically. So hopefully with this, um, it you know gets more recruits going, hey, they got a former 49ers you know, coach back there and also you know one of their – head coaches maybe they're you know they're trying to get something going here maybe go there maybe hopefully with the schemes they start working a little bit better for colorado because you know they got to play oregon and usc and there's poor colorado should just stayed in the big 12 should just stayed in the big 12 that would have been nice uh former houston starter quarterback john o'corn finally announced where he was transferring and that is to the big house that's michigan O'Corn, who was a true sophomore in 2014, will have to sit out this upcoming season per NCAA transfer rules. And will have two seasons of eligibility remaining starting in 2016. The 2013, he was the 2013 American Athletic Conference Rookie of the Year. Started 16 games in two seasons with the Cougars and threw for 3,100 yards and 28 touchdowns as a freshman. But then last season, he struggled very early and uh, within the first five games and then lost the starting job to uh, quarterback or who used to be a wide receiver, Greg Ward Jr., who really sparked the team and got them going. He did a great job. I don't know if you guys watched many of the Houston games, um, you know, because the last couple seasons their offenses took a huge drop down. But now Greg Ward Jr., that's a name to keep in mind now. It's a huge name to keep in mind. He he might do, be doing something special at Houston, so – uh, I, I keep that, you know, just watch him. Just watch him. Uh, also, Utah State quarterback Chucky Keaton. Thankfully, thankfully, and, and I know it's hard for him to hear this, but it's a good thing for him, but it's kind of a bad thing. It's bittersweet, basically. Has been granted a medical hardship for a fifth year of eligibility by the NCAA and the Mountain West. Uh, Keaton missed the last f- 11 games last season after re-injuring his surgically repaired left knee in Utah State's home victory against Wake Forest back September back on September 13th uh in 2000 oh last season but then in 2013 Keaton tore an ACL and MCL in his knee against BYU so Chucky Keaton if you got a lot of you should remember his name early in the season I probably even before the the season really started uh he was listed as you know potential dark horse for the Heisman you know he's a good passer he obviously can run the ball but then injuries have really just plagued him down. But now he's back, most likely his last year. I, I, I think even if he got hurt, I don't even know if the NCAA allows six years. I think we might have heard it six years. So I know Case Keenum of Houston, I think he was only there for five. He might have been there for six, but um, you know I, I doubt they will do it again. So hopefully Chucky Keenum can stay healthy, throw for a ton of yards, and just make a, a great story and hopefully have some NFL scouts look at him. Uh, in three games last season, Keaton completed 51 of 92 passes, 426 yards, two touchdowns, and ran for 81 yards and a touchdown on 20 carries. So kind of his old self, but, you know, see what he can do this upcoming season. And that's it for college football. That's it. Some news, head coaches going places, coaching uh, staffs getting completed. Sadly, you all know me. I can't. Got to show the negative sometimes with TCU. And uh, we lost our defensive coordinator. He's retiring. Uh, but sounds like.